All right. So I think I got the right flow for us for tomorrow, or probably today by the time you watch this video. Um, so what you're going to do is let's first I'm going to explain it to you and I'll let you demo it. You'll see here everything is empty zero 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 zero. So receipts. This is the bucket obviously where items are coming in or where they're received. Uh, internal transfers for stock moves internally. Delivery orders are for typically right repaired products that we have to ship to our customer. Picking components. This is an internal stock uh, operation where we're picking components to bring them from our general stock where they're stored to where they'll be repaired. And then manufacturing is where the repairs will occur. So let's actually go in and sell something, a repair. I'm going to sell a repair to John Doe and I'm going to sell here the repaired product, one unit we're going to repair. And once I confirm it, automatically generates my manufacturing order, which I'll use as my repair order and my delivery. The manufacturing order here is listed as manufacturing order number nine. Make sure your customer knows that this is an important record to follow because it's going to drive everything. Here is the delivery order and you'll see this is delivery order number eight where the operation is to ship the repaired product and here's the ex uh, ex uh, excuse me the expected uh, date at which it will be repaired. And I'm going to exit debug mode quickly, make it cleaner for you. So as all of this happened, if we go to inventory, you'll see a number of operations were automatically created. Here's the receipt, and this is the receipt of the product that we're expecting to receive from the customer, the unrepaired product. Here's the delivery order, where we're expecting, of course, to ship to John Doe for sale order nine, the repaired product once it's done, but it's waiting. Here is the pick components, where we're expecting to move from pre-production, from stock to pre-production, the unrepaired product that we're waiting to receive for the, to the customer. And here's the manufacturing order currently in a waiting state uh, because we're waiting for the product to be received from the customer. So let's go here and actually begin the process. Customer drops the product off, we receive it onto our dock. From there, we see automatically this goes from waiting to process, to process because we have this unrepaired product in stock and we need to move it to the repair location. Once it hits the repair location, it lets the team know that the materials needed to begin the repair are in fact ready. At this point, your production or repair team can begin the process of repairing. Here they can select products and say what they need to produce. And we could even create products on the fly. And I'm going to create material eight on the fly, which doesn't exist. Your team can do two things and we can set this up in Odoo to automatically by default select these options. But in this case, I'm just going to select them manually. They select this, and they can either choose the vendor they want to buy it from, or they can say the vendor is to be determined and leave it as such. And here they define the number of units needed to produce, uh, to do this repair as such. And they can list as many line items as they want for raw materials needed, either some that exist in the system or what they'll need on the fly. Here, they'll define the steps they'll take to execute the actual repair. Here we'll just say assemble, and they can define the work center it takes place at. I'll we'll just call this finish, and we can assign one here, or we could create a new one on the fly if we wanted to by clicking work center three, for example. And I'll create an edit, and I'll add a cost per hour at this work center of 100. Here you define the amount of time that you've spent at each station, five minutes and 10 minutes. And once I click save instantly, I'll see a purchase order has been generated automatically. And I can open up that purchase order and just like that I see the respective uh, quantities of raw materials that I need in order to fill this manufacturing order. And the manufacturing order is linked. That way the people in the purchasing department, when they go and see, okay, who do we need to find a vendor for? They open up the PO and they can see that same PO that was just created now. Um, right in their linked manufacturing order, which links us back to MO number nine. And you can see here that we're waiting the raw materials necessary to start this production. So purchasing can go through, find the vendors, confirm the purchase order, and once they confirm it, it automatically generates an incoming receipt, where again, our inventory team manages the process of picking the products, receiving them in, and then from there they can pick them and send them to the production location. And once they're in the production location, of course, automatically we see where our, our uh, repair order or production order is ready again to begin. And we can see that those are no longer waiting. We now have them in stock. 
And once the repair is complete, we can mark it as done and apply. And here we'll have a full overview of the repair process from everything we've purchased and all the related purchase orders here, the original sale order of the repair where we can go in and edit the unit price uh, of this repair, which I'll show you how to do shortly, any stock moves that happened. I can see product moves as well, which breaks down all the products that have uh, moved around over the course of this uh, process in our inventory. And lastly, a cost analysis. Here I see the raw materials, including the ones we created on the fly, the related quantities, and the unit cost of such raw materials. Of course, I didn't pay anything for these raw materials uh, in this demo, so the cost is zero. Uh, it would be up to your purchasing team uh, to either define a cost if you want to do a standard costing, or they could do first in, first out costing, and any uh, price actually paid on the PO will, will carry over to the cost of the, the raw materials and, of course, to the manufacturing process itself. And you'll see a total cost over here for raw goods. Over here, you'll see your total cost of labor. We can see the operation, including the working time, and this includes the uh, cost of $100 per hour on the work center that we created on the fly to give us a total cost to repair of $43.58. Here I can go back to this manufacturing order, right to the sale order, and I can enter a price of $60, for example, and save it. And here you'll have everything linked. And once that's done, of course, because we've finished the repair, the delivery is now set to process. I can go ahead and I can actually validate and ship out my repaired product to my customer. And once I do that, if I go back to the sale order uh, and I look at sale order number nine, we'll go ahead and we will create the invoice, in this case for the $60 for the repair and post the entries to the GL, as you'll see here. So that's the flow that I'm thinking. I'd uh, recommend give this a watch a few times and show it to the customer or even send them the video and, and get their thoughts that way. Um, hope this is helpful. If you have any additional questions, feel free to let me know.